Hi everybody, Steve from Steve's Makerspace, and today we're back in Deep Dream Generator. This is more advanced tips. If you haven't seen Deep Dream Generator or tried it, I suggest you go watch my first video about it. If you haven't tried Deep Dream Generator, this video might be a bit tedious for you. In this video, I'll be looking at what the highest performing people seem to be doing. I'll be comparing mixes of various options. I'll be looking at iteration boost and what that does. I'll be showing you some experiments I've done to figure out what the machine pays attention to. I'll be looking at composite styles and what that can do for you and how I do that. And I'll look briefly at the Deep Dream Generator Wiki and where you might get images from. So if that sounds interesting to you, stick around. We'll get started. I'm going to turn off the face cam so you can see the images better. Let's start by taking a look at what the best dreamers are doing. Well, for that, I went to the Deep Dream Generator, the best, switch it to a year, and here are the best in a year. If you click on this right here and click on info, it tells you all the options that were used when this image was generated. So I made a log of the options that the best of the best were using. And what I found was that everybody was doing extra high enhancement. The iterations were averaging about 1.5. The weight was about 50%. The scale was about 80% on average. I also looked at the best ones in terms of the portraits versus the animals versus landscapes. And I didn't find much difference. They're all pretty much the same as the overall average. So this is Quan Chi's page and her best. So if we look at hers, she tends to have a lower iteration. I mean, it's bigger than 0.6, but it's not two. And she tends to do a lower style scale compared to some other people. Now notice with her images that she's got a black background on a lot of these. The original has a black background. The style has a belt black background. She's also got a lot of these are using a black background with some sort of bright image. So this is like bright lights. Here we've got some bright lights. Here we got some more bright lights. If you use a background that has stuff in it like forest back here, this style is going to be get transferred to the background as well as the foreground. It, it might. So in order to make sure that it only gets put on the animal, then having a black background is helpful. The other option is to just have an extreme close-up like this one. Now, if we look at a different person who has the best of the year, Oscar, uh, his images tend to be more complicated. And when he is doing the animals and this person, notice he's got a white background instead of a black background. And Oscar tends to do a larger iteration boost. He's got a boost of two. You can also do composite style. Most people don't use composite style, but here you can see Oscar did four different images. You can't combine these within the website, but you can do this in Photoshop or whatever, uh, and then upload this as a single image. And here's his source image. And so it took pieces of each of these styles and tried to meld them together to make this. I've been experimenting with some composite styles. There are a couple of reasons for this. One is that it can be a real needle in a haystack trying to find a style that exactly mimics this, especially when, in this case, I'm trying to do a stained glass style and I can't find something that exactly looks like this. So I want to find a stained glass that has some blue and one that has yellow, one that has green. And so I found all of these. I shrunk them down so that each of these panels are about the same size. And giving the computer more styles to use just means it has uh, more paint on the canvas, basically, or more brushes that it can use. Pretty happy with the final result it came up with. Here's one of my previous attempts where I only used one style. And it's interesting, but I think my final version is more interesting. Composites are also good if you want to try to mix a couple of different styles together. So here I've got some cartoon sort of images mixed with some real photography and also a little bit of watercolor. 
And so I've got this image that came from that. Here's another experiment with composite style. I basically threw a bunch of weird stuff at the computer to see what it would do to this pyramid to make, to make this, uh, which is pretty weird, but it worked. Let's compare a little bit more uh, the different options. So this one is a style weight of 90%, but the enhancement is low. This one, the style weight is lower, but the enhancement is high. The images are pretty similar, though this one is definitely more defined. You can see this eyeball, for instance, is a lot more defined than this eyeball over here. Here is comparing style weight and iteration boost. This is 60% style weight with an iteration boost of 2.0 compared to a larger style weight and a smaller iteration boost. So in this one, I think the cow is getting kind of washed out because the style is so strong. Here I think the iteration boost was maybe too high because it, the, the picture is so dark. But remember, I started out with this as the style image, and so this is pretty dark. This is one of Oscar's. He started with this as the subject and this as the style, and this is his outcome. This is using an iteration boost of 2.0. As an experiment, I took the source image and the style image and used the same options and fed it into the machine, but only did an iteration boost of 0.6. And this is the result. So here's mine at 0.6 and his at 2.0. So what I notice is that this is more vivid. There's definitely more definition around the eye. There's more blues down here. This is more bright than this over here. The deer seems to be popping out a little bit more compared to this one. Now, an iteration means that you take the output of something and feed it back into an algorithm. So I thought, well, here's a picture I did of uh, Cab Calloway with this, and I got this, great. What if I fed this back in? So this is my original, and then this becomes my style image. Here's what the result was, feeding it back in. Both of this was an iteration boost of 0.6, the original uh, image that I got and th this image that I got, both 0.6. What if I then took this and fed it into here but did an iteration boost of 2.0? So here on the right is my iteration boost of 2.0. On the left is my original attempt, this with 0.6, and here's my second iteration using this image at 0.6. Now I noticed that this one uh, seems to have taken more of this guy's vest and put it on his face, which is okay, I think. The red from this guy's scarf is being used more on his face. The blue from the sky is being used more over here. So this is interesting. I also did an experiment trying to figure out is the computer paying attention more to the color or the image or shapes? So the top is a source image that I made and uh, these three go together as one image. And the bottom is my style image that I made. So these three also go together as one image. So you can see that these are three different styles. So here is the resulting image that came from this as the source and this as the style. Now what did it do? It seems to have looked and seen that the color of this matches the style of this and applied this style to this image. Whereas in this case, I believe it took this image and applied this style because there's more blue here. And so this is looking more like a watercolor. This one of the fox, I think because uh, both of these two styles had some orange in them. I think it combined these two styles to make this. So it seems to me that it cares more about the color. So I did another experiment where I took the color out of the source image and did the same style image. And here's the result of that. It seems to have combined these three styles and made some sort of composite style and then applied that to all three images. I'm getting a lot of bleeding over here. In other words, a uh, color into the black, where back here, there was still, there was some bleeding, but it wasn't quite as much. I'm also noticing though, that there's no bleeding 
out here in the white area. There's a little bit here and here. Because remember, this uh, this is one image, and so it could have bled all over the place like it did in the black here, but it didn't, which is interesting. I wonder if it's noticing the shape of this looks the same as the shape of this, and so it's trying to keep that shape. Or it could just be that I didn't offer it any white in here. The only white I offered it was in here, and so it applied that white to this white. You should try to use a high-res image for your style image. That gives the computer more detail to work with and results in a sharper image. I suggest trying several different style examples to come up with the best performer. So here I use three different paintings of sunflowers and ultimately, ultimately I decided to go with the Van Gogh flowers and pretty happy with the result here. One thing you may not know about is there is a Deep Dream Wiki. DDG.wiki, I'll have a link to this in the video description. There are some helpful tips and guides in here. Unfortunately, some of the older ones are missing images. There's also an extensive list of links to source images, especially ones that are public domain or Creative Commons. So I'd encourage you to check that out. I tend to start with Google Images and then select Tools, Usage Rights, Creative Commons Licenses. Although just make sure that these actually are Creative Commons. Some of these download sites are more trouble than they're worth. Wikimedia and Wikipedia are good. I like Pexels.com and Pixabay.com. Here's an interesting one. ComicBookPlus.com has uh, public domain comic books. Finally, I'm going to give you a link to this handy summary of copyright term and public domain from Cornell University. That's all for today. If you have further suggestions of how to do pictures well, uh, leave those in the comments. If you like this video, give it a like, consider subscribing to the channel and ring the bell for notifications. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye now. Steve's Makerspace.